still not sure how he's going to fit in. Roger Eric. Clemens undefeated since June 9th. Eric Chavez. Strange play. Bernie Williams thought it was out. The leap was late. Really late. The ball, well, there's a little disagreement here. Actually, where do you see this? Meanwhile, as Jeremy Giambi scores and Chavez comes around to score, it's an inside the park home run. The 11th in the bigs this year, the A second this year. The ball actually hits a barrier behind the wall, and that's how it ricochets back onto the field. Good exercise, though. For the no question. Bases loaded, three two A's. Bottom seven. The rookie pitcher Barry Zito out, looking nervous. Jose Canseco, 440 career home runs, getting loosened up. Jim Messier facing Scott Brosha, strike three. Two outs. Zito hoping for one more. Next batter, Jose Canseco, pinch hitting. It's a two one pitch here. bat. Canseco hitless in his last 18 pinch hit attempts. He's hitting 167 as a pinch hitter, but what a finish as the Yanks come back. His ring has a ready to deal, and Bernie swings and hits a high drive to right. That ball is high. It is far. It is gone. Bernie Williams. Bernie goes boom. Here's Justice. The pitch swung on and hit in the air to deep right center. That ball is high. It is far. It is gone. Unbelievable. Justice prevails in New York. Justice and Bernie Williams go back to back and the belly to belly. And the Yankees win the game 4-3. Two pitches by Izzy, one loss. Isringhausen's seventh blown save. This month. Second inning, no score. Carl Everett off the Ron Ortiz. Down the line, Darren Erstad coming. Makes the restaurant quality catch. Nabs that thing right at the end of his glove. Fourth inning, one nothing the Angels. Orlando Palmero's out at second. Garrett Anderson off Pedro. Palmero will score easily. Two nothing, Angels in front. Pedro gets it going, run the sixth. Mo Vaughn. Another case of the man holding us down. We're in the seventh. Still 2-1 Anaheim. Troy O'Leary. He's your man. To center field. Garrett Anderson should have it. Nobody! O'Leary out to second. And Anderson's puzzled with himself. Two batters later. O'Leary. The tying run at third. Ortiz to Ed Sprague. And he's leaving. That's more beer for us. Six strikeouts for him. Pedro can't watch. Two out. Ortiz against Carl Everett. Pops it up. Troy Gloss will finish the game. Pedro goes down. Ortiz gets the complete game win. 2-1, your final. Ramon Ortiz, a two-hitter for his first career complete game. Martinez losing for the first time in 12 road starts this season. Kevin Elster at the place facing Phil Norton, the rookie. That is gone. The lead is cut to 3-2. to The very next batter is the pitcher. Darren Dryford, who was just trying to win his fifth straight start, but look at him, hit the ball. So money and he doesn't even know it. It's a home run for Dryford to tie the game at three. Three batters later, Gary Sheffield knows all about long balls. 36 homers, he leads the majors, one better than Sosa. Two batters later, yeah, that's Sean Green, and that's gone. The fourth home run of the inning for the Dodgers. More on that in a bit. Dodgers up by three. Todd Van Poppel facing Dr Are you kidding me? The pitcher, two home runs in one game? When the heck did the last time that that happen? You'll find out later. Top of the eighth, two out. Cubs with a runner on third. Eric Young just watching against Jeff Shaw. Dodgers close out the Cubs 7-5. to five. Now about Dryford. Two homers in this game. Three all of this season. He's the first major league pitcher to hit two homers in a game since Derek Lilliquist back in 1990 for the Braves. The last Dodger pitcher to do so? Don Drysdale back in 1958. The Dodgers become the seventh team this year to hit four homers in one inning. Ortiz, easier said than done. Ortiz strikes out Jenkins. Jenkins 0 for 4. Brewers couldn't get a runner past right, second against Ortiz. Now he's batting against Jamie Wright. Ortiz, the flare. Jeff Jenkins. Nice try. Can't make the catch, though. JT Snow scores. 1-0 Giants. Top of the seven, same score. Ortiz still in. Facing Jose Hernandez. Hernandez. Spectator, he was 0 for 2. Ortiz goes 7, 6 Ks. Giants win. Russ Ortiz pitches those seven shutout innings, and he drove in the game's only run to win his third straight at home after beginning the year 0-4 and, and eight starts at Pac Bell Park. Giants 38-12 in their last 50 at home.
D-backs, winners of four of the last six, hosting Montreal, Randy Johnson. Wonder if he's still fighting with Buck Showalter. D-backs have one nothing. Vladimir Guerrero against Brian Anderson. Guerrero says, it's not you, it's me. 27th home run of the year, 2-1 Montreal. Bottom four, we're tied at three, bases full. Tony Womack facing Scott Downs. Liner, Jose Vidro, great play. He was also three for five, and then he doubles the man on second. Expos get out of it, we're tied. Top five, Vlad, opposite way muscle. Number 28, four RBIs in this game, three hits. He also had a triple, 6-3 Montreal. He's every manager's dream. Guerrero again, the trifecta facing Russ Springer. There's the triple. He's a fantasy come true for a big league manager, isn't he, Kenny? Yeah. Vlad Guerrero. Styling. Guerrero is fourth multi-homer game this season. Eight. Colorado bags full. Brian Rose is first start in Colorado. Gets Jose Silva to pop up to Larry Walker. Seven hits allowed, five innings for Rose. Next inning, same situation with the bags full. Warren Morris this time. It's deep. Off the Rose. Caught by Larry Walker. End of threat. On to the six. Rockies in trouble again. Craig House. It's Jason Kendall to load the bags. Base is full for the third straight inning. Mike Myers comes into pitch, strikes out Brian Giles. Giles left six on. When hitless, Pirates stranded 14. Rockies win 6 1. Rain out in April. Here we go. First inning of first game. Scoreless, as it should be. Two out. White Sox starter John Garland walks Alex Rodriguez on four pitches. Full count to Edgar Martinez. And walks as good as a hit again. Next batter. John Olerud were setting something up. Three walks with two out, loads the bases. Productivity in the U.S. raised 5.3% last quarter. Jay Buhner, all this land is mine for as far as the ball shall travel. Takes Garland out his 22nd dong in the season. Four out from the Mariners. Joel Pinero's major league debut just up from Tacoma. Puts Paul Canerico away, goes six innings, five hits given up, two runs, four Ks. Ends up 6-1 in the seventh. Rodriguez, home run. A-Rod's 29, M's go out front, 7-1. Eighth inning, M's up 8-2, to two. bases loaded once more. Edgar, El, Asun Grande, Ombre. Mariners win it by a count of 12-4. Two grand slams by the Mariners in one game is a first in franchise history. But it had happened once before this season. The Dodgers, Freddie Garcia, and it's back. It is back, it's not coming back. Hit a guy in the back. 31st homer of the year for him. 1-0 the White Sox. Fourth inning, 4-0 four Sox. A-Rod. Home run. 458 feet. 30th of the year. The White Sox still lead it, though, 4-1. We're in the fifth. 5-4 Sox. Bases loaded. Olerud. Should be a double play. Tony Graffinino. Jose Valentin. Malo. Not a good throw. Two runs come to score. The Mariners get the lead by a count of 6-5. to five. Bottom of night. As a hero Sasaki against Harold Baines rips that, but John Olerud did rent Tom Amansky offensive drills video. The Mariners get out with the sweep. 34 seconds. Brady Anderson against Brian Moeller. Anderson going deep. Juan Gonzalez and Juan Encarnacion both after it. They want it. Encarnacion, he gave 111%, one better than the standard 110%. And it's Gonzalez against Pat Rapp. Bases loaded, unloaded, and Chula! Debbie Cruz and Damian Easley come to score. Gonzalez had been in a 1-for-19 slump before that. Tigers up 2-1. to one. Moeller to Albert Bell. Tree died to make that bad. Moeller's seven strikeouts in the second complete game this season. Went the whole way his 10th career complete game. I guess if he had a complete game, he probably went the whole way, didn't he? This win puts him on the good side of 500. He's now 8-7. and seven. The Indians playing baseball right here. Johnny Oates and the Rangers. After Cleveland, the Indians have won six straight coming in. Bases loaded for Gabe Kapler, and he's got a 22-game hit streak down the line. Luis Alise and Frank Catalanato score. Catalanato was four for four and scored four runs. It's two nothing. Bottom of second, Rangers up three nothing. Two on, no out. Kenny Rogers, Will Cordero, comebacker, and it starts the one six three double play. Top of third, three one Texas. Jason Barre trying to intentionally walk Rafi Palmero. He was very successful in throwing a non-strike. Catalanato comes in to score. 4-1 Texas on that. Now it's 7-1. No out. One on. Quick game. Rusty Greer over a wall that they'd set up in the outfield. His fifth home run of the season. Rangers win. Show them what they've won. The Major League Baseball game 11-2. Kenny Rogers goes eight innings for his 11th win in his 400th appearance for Texas. Not this season. That would be a record or something. 
The Rangers, by the way, picked up pitcher Pete Monroe for the Blue Jays to complete that deal last week for Dave Martinez. How about the Jays and the Royals? How about third inning? No score. Two on, one out for Dave Martinez. Martinez did that. He meant to do that. Mickey Morandini's running. Greg Zahn waiting for him. How'd that happen? one nothing. the Jays. Zahn, puzzled. Fourth inning, 3 nothing. Jays. Two on. Martinez, a flare. Johnny Damon couldn't get that. Jays go up 4-0. Bottom of five, 6 nothing. the Jays. Now one out for Dave McCarty of Frank Castillo. Going to right, Dave Martinez. And he yanked that thing back in. Castillo faced three over the minimum. I heard you. Three over the minimum. Good thing they had extra video for that in his seven innings, is what I was trying to say. Two streaks, one continued, one ended. Fox waiting, launching that thing. Base hit, Mike Lowell, Derek Lee, both going to score points for their team. Two nuts on the Marlins in front. We're in the seventh, runners at the corners. No one's out. Jesus Sanchez with the infield in. He's a pitcher. Cranks that up the middle. Batting 220 this season, you know. Sure. I knew Marlins up 3 0. Bottom of seven, Sanchez against Fernando Vina. Going to center. Preston Wilson. He's after it. Lost his footing and regained it. Makes a nice catch. The Peloponnesians had no knowledge of nor any use for fine catches, yet they thrived for many years. The Marlins win it 7 0. Florida's first win in five tries against St. Louis. All Jones and the Braves back in Cincy. First batter, Rafael Furcal. On the way. Plan that. Over Chris Steins, Dimitri Young, all sorts of trouble. For Cal, another three hit game for him goes to third on Young's error. For Cal, would score on an Andrew Jones RBI ground out to make it 1 0 Atlanta. Before the third inning starts, Leo Mazzoni fainted in the dugout. A large welt under his left eye. The problem he didn't eat after working out on a treadmill before the game, stayed in the hospital overnight. 4 0 Braves, Andy Ashby, Dante Pichette, Brian Jordan. Nice catch, but Jordan would have to leave the game with a strained right groin. He is day to day. Bottom nine now, Dimitri Young facing Andy Ashby, trying to even his record at eight. Young, simply not scared of heights. A line drive home run, his 13th home run of the year. Young, two for four, two RBIs hitting 298. Rets now down one. Bottom nine, two out. You saw Pokey Reese, but Mike Remlinger does the job against Chris Steins. The 11 save for Remlinger, and the Braves win. Get this, Atlanta now 25-6 and six against the Reds since 97. For Cal, now 9 for 14 in his last three games. He's at. They wouldn't see Mike Piazza still out with that knee problem. In the first, outliders struggling. Jeff Bagwell looking for space, finds it. That scores Lugo, bags two for four, two runs scored, two RBIs hit in 306, one up in Astros. Next batter, Richard Hidalgo. Looking strong against Al Leiter, who gave up three runs in the first inning. Hidalgo, two for five, he's hitting 282. He had two doubles in this game. You thought Al Leiter was sweating before. Now in the fourth, a rare positive moment for the Mets, thanks to Robin Ventura. Maybe we'll see this again on top plays. Stick around for that. Look at the replay just in case you stepped away to have a beverage. A strike from his knees to Abbott, who nails Tim Bogar. It's the 5-4-3 variety. In the fifth, Hidalgo not done punishing lighter. Another liner, that scores Jeff Bagwell. It's 5-0 Houston. And this was easy for the Astros. 9-3 the final. Brian Powell notching his first win in almost two years. Benny Agbayani drove in all three Met runs. Mike Bordick did go three for three with two doubles despite his 11th error in this one. The loss costly for the Mets, who now fall four games back of up one nothing. Burl. Is there any doubt? His 12th home run of the year. Phillies lead 2-0. Time for Ed Vosper again on relief. Doesn't realize the uh, dragonfly on his hat is there, and that's disgusting. Using the arrow to look, the dragonfly would stay there for most of the eighth inning. Damian Jackson faces full one out. Jackson finds some space in front of Doug Lanville. Phil Nevin would score. Padres within one now, 5-4. Bottom eight now. Who do you want with the bases loaded? You want this man up. Pat Burrell. Two homers in this game. Second Grand Slam of the year for Pat Burrell. He's six for seven with two homers, two walks, and 17 RBI with the bases juiced. He's a rookie. 10-4, the final. The Phil score in each of the 